returned last Wednesday with the War Tour, an exciting night of fights featuring new stars burning brighter than ever before. We also saw a heated matchup as Ricky Backdrop took on Davey English for the first time. In opposite blocks of the Honoyo GP, these men who could have won it all fought for the chance to take on Danny Thorpe in Osaka. Ricky Backdrop emerged victorious. In the main event, Richard Richards declared war on not just the entire Honel locker room, but the Honel world champion himself after defeating Lucas Von Hahn in a mere 50 seconds. The excitement you can't get anywhere else continues now. Hello and welcome to Hono Afterburn, I'm your host Brick9mm, and tonight we are kicking things off with a match between Mackenzie O'Rourke the Boxer versus debuting fighter Eiko Takeshita. Eiko is a hybrid fighter and we do not know anything about them. Tonight will be their first chance to prove themselves to an all-new audience here at Honeo Pro Wrestling. Meanwhile, O'Rourke has had a very, very rocky career here so far, but their speed, their speed may enable them to beat Aiko if Aiko just, just that caught off guard. Aiko taking the back with an excellent Strike Rush. Aiko tries and fails to land a massive kick. And O'Rourke is clearly outpacing her so far with the strikes. Of course, that's only to be expected. It's a boxer versus a hybrid fighter. It is rather difficult to become accustomed to. It's rather difficult to become accustomed to a system like Hono, but Aiko. Eiko showed an excellent adjustment for someone who just arrived, countering that punch with a sleeper hold, but no, Mackenzie O'Rourke at that time, she did not counter the punch, and this time, no, she didn't either. Eiko is just too dazed from these punches. In fact, O'Rourke may have already rattled her, but no, Takeshita trying to make an excellent comeback. I say excellent because of those guillotine neck locks. It, it was not locked in for more than a second, but it was pretty. The technique on display. Of course, she just did three in rapid succession, and neither lasted for hardly more than a second. Meanwhile, Mackenzie O'Rourke, with excellent strike rushes like that, she is doing a much more efficient job at putting away her opponent than Aiko is. That may change here in the second round. Because anything can happen when you put a mixed martial arts in there with a boxer. Anything can happen in Honeo Pro Wrestling. Yet her guillotine necklocks are still woefully ineffective. O'Rourke with a furious strike rush sending Aiko down to the mat. Whoa. 
Aiko with another guillotine necklock. But now Mackenzie O'Rourke is back at the back. Takeshita fails to get anything off of that excellent maneuvering, and Mackenzie has her down for the second time this round. Once again, Takeshita gets up at the five count, but can you get up after that excellent super body blow? And a very well-placed kick, but it failed to knock down Mackenzie O'Rourke. And a knockout punch, sealing Eiko Takeshita's fate in her debuted match against Mackenzie O'Rourke. It's a shame, but here in Hono Pro Wrestling, fighters have plenty of opportunities to prove themselves. Welcome back to Hono Afterburn. Andronicus Turner, the boxer, will be taking on Karateka Bluce Lee. Turner is coming off an excellent victory against accomplished boxer Ross Cromley. We can only hope this match here tonight on Afterburn, Turner in the trunks versus Bruce Lee in the blue paint can be half as good as Ross as that Ross Cromley match. Yes, Turner is a rising star, Bruce Lee, on the other hand, he has been here for a very long time. He has failed to make any significant waves, but who knows, he might challenge for the Keishin Black Belt someday, and we know Andronicus Turner will definitely, definitely be in the Hono World Championship picture someday. But Blues is skillfully, skillfully evading his punches and taking the back and knocking him down, but he's not keeping Turner down for long. And an excellent octopus stretch, the, the Manji Gatame. It didn't last for very long, but when you stretch a man like that, it, it does, it almost breaks the arm for every second it's locked in. Turner is deliberately pacing himself now, and it, he hits an excellent barrage of body blows. However, he is going to want to be a little more cautious around Blue Slee, who keeps aiming for his legs with those kicks and keeps, keeps working on his arms with these octopus stretches. And Blue Slee almost seems to be overtaking him as far as striking goes. And Turner with an excellent, excellent uppercut, followed by a almost deadly straight. Blues was, it almost looked like he was going for another octopus stretch. Turner swings. He swings and misses. Maybe he's getting desperate. That would have been the Kronk overhand, his finishing maneuver. And Blue Slee once again traps the arms. Turner, Turner is on thin ice if Blue Slee can do significant damage to his arms or his legs for that matter. He has to take advantage of the superior the superior striking power. But if Blue Slee keeps hitting his legs like that, this striking power won't matter, but now Turner has Blue Slee in the clinch. He may be gaining the lead in this race. The second match here on Hono Afterburn, Blue Slee with an excellent, excellent Enzigiri, and Turner is fired up. Of course, the only strike of his that landed happened to be the weakest, but there's more where that came from. 
loose, going to work on the leg in a more direct manner. You can see Turner's movement has visibly been affected. He has to knock out Blues now more than ever, but Blues, Blues is fired up. Running knee! And going back to work on those legs. And another Enzigiri. Yet it is still not enough to get the ref to start counting. But that might be. And almost saved by the bell, but not before feeling the full force of a Blues lead knee to the face. Blues trapping the arm, that could be it. Either way, Blues is doing a remarkable job at keeping up with the rising star Andronicus Turner, but every, every one of those punches is like taking the full force of a loaded gun. And back into the clinch once more. And Blues, Blues is becoming red. But no, Blues knocked down Turner, taking the Kamigoye. But no, Turner firing back like a runaway train. Blues can hardly even stand, but he gets up at the nine count just in the nick of time. He might have been going for another knee to the face there, but Turner counters. And the Kronk overhand seals Blues Lee's fate. Another excellent performance by Andronicus Turner, but also an excellent performance by Blue Slee. The time for the renegade street fighting organization to descend upon the world is here. Coming soon, it's the Off Gauntlet. 11 matches, 1 champion. Accepting all challengers, do you have what it takes to enter the underground? Welcome back to Hono Afterburn, as it is now time for our main event, the debuting fighter, Masaki Isogai, the hybrid fighter. A bit of a hybrid fighter of a different style, as you will soon see, will be taking on Ricky Quick. Ahead of Ricky Quick's match with Anton Mihailov at Critical Club Presents Critical Edge. Yes, he will be facing Anton Mihailov for the Kishin Black Belt. Now, Isogai is a very, very good competitor of what we've seen here so far. Just based off of that, he works a very different style from all of the other hybrid fighters here. You can see, because he doesn't do. He does not do closed fist strikes or anything like that. He's traditional Japanese hybrid fighter. It will be interesting to see a man who's focused on such holds, a hybrid fighter like that, take on a wrestler like Ricky Quick. And Quick, with that rolling shoulder hold, we know. We know and love. And goes to the back with a takedown, but Isogai. Isogai, back on the mat. quick standoff there, they were clearly gauging each other's abilities. That's really the main point of this first round, but Isogai, the excellent strike rush and popping right back up after that neck chancery and hitting Ricky Quick again with a great strike rush. Quick is trying to take Masaki Isogai down to the mat and fail. He may be of a similar class, but he is almost, it's almost as if he is a whole new type of fighter, considering he fights that traditional Japanese style. 
and Isogai with one last massive strike rush of the first round and heads down to work on Ricky Quirk's legs to try and take out that excellent speed of Ricky Quirk. Down on the mat, Quick gets out and starts working on the arms of Masaki Isoga. Quick at the back, floats over, butterfly necklock. Isogai failing to get anything off, and Quick back again, floating over with another butterfly necklock. He has to be a little worn down from those excellent holds, but he goes to the back. No, Ricky Quick gets out skillfully. Floats over once more with the double arm suplex. But Masaki Sogai trying, trying and succeeding to make a comeback in a big way with a great strike rush followed by that choke on the mat. But Quick. Quick is getting ready to go off the ropes. Quick tackles. The giant swing. Quick has much more strength than you'd expect from a man of his size. But Isogai is relentless. Getting the very first fall of the match. Quick up at the five count. But Isogai drags him right back down with the ground headlock. Quick with another neck chancery. Isogai taking his time to get back on his feet. And up just in the nick of time at the nine count, pins Quick down. Tries to go for something, but Quick says no, and they are exhausted. But another massive strike rush closing out the second round. The third round has arrived, and this is a very tense battle, but a massive, massive wheel kick there. Can Ricky Quick even get up from that? Quick barely gets up at the nine count and hits a chancery. Another neck chancery. Now Isogai's the one on thin ice, but no, he gets up at the nine count, pins Quick down, goes for a massive move off the back, but no. Exhausted once again. Isogai pins, pins down Ricky Quick. Quick says no, and once again, Jesus. They have, they have taken each other to their very limits. Quick, popping Isogai in the face. A rare move for a wrestler, knocks himself into the turnbuckle, leaving himself wide open. Wide open for that chicken wing, sealing his demise, and, and a very, very skillful victory from Masaki Isogai, who took the veteran Ricky Quick to his absolute limits. Thank you for watching this week's edition of Hono Afterburn. Good night.